Hello and welcome to this Foster Care Institute online training webinar, Building Self-Esteem for Children and Youth in Foster Care. I'm your host, Dr. John DeGarmo, founder and director of the Foster Care Institute. I have been a foster parent myself to over 60 plus children. I'm an author of several best-selling foster care books, international speaker and trainer, but of course, thing I value the most is, again, being a parent to over 60 plus children who have come through my home and been a part of my family. Over the years, my wife and I have taken in many, many youth and teens from the foster care system who have suffered from a number of issues, including self-esteem. To be sure, many youth in foster care do experience issues of self-esteem, and we're going to examine that in this webinar. Indeed, our goal for this webinar is to increase your awareness of how to build self-esteem in youth who are suffering, in youth in crisis, in youth in the foster care system. Our key objectives are to increase your awareness of why some youth in the foster care system might experience low self-esteem, and we're going to help you gain some, some strategies develop some strategies on how to build self-esteem in youth who are in crisis. Now, before we look at why youth in foster care might experience low self-esteem, I think it's important for us to have a brief reminder of why youth in foster care might experience feelings of grief and loss. I want you to imagine a young teenager, perhaps 12 or 13 years of age who suddenly, without any warning whatsoever, any warning that is logical to him at least, he is removed from his home, whether it's from neglect, whether it's from abuse, whatever it might be. He's removed from his home, his mother, his father, he's maybe taken from his siblings. He's taken from his bedroom, his belongings, he's taken from his pets, he's taken from his kitchen, he's taken from his home, he's taken from his neighborhood, his school, his schoolmates, his teachers, his relatives, aunts, uncles, grands, cousins, everything that is familiar to this teenager, and he is placed into a residential facility. To be sure, this is a time of tremendous uncertainty for this youth. He might have thoughts such as, why am I here? Did I do something wrong? And if so, what did I do wrong? Are my parents upset with me? Will I ever see my family again? Will these other teenagers at this facility, will they hurt me? Will the staff be kind to me? Or will they curse me and yell at me? Will I ever be safe again? For some teens, they might experience feelings of guilt. They may think that they did something wrong. They may think that they are at fault. They may blame themselves for being abused, for being neglected. They may blame themselves if their parents have been incarcerated. They might blame themselves for being removed from their home and being placed into a residential facility. And for many teens, they are overwhelmed with emotions and feelings that they can't process at the same time, and they might not understand. So for some teens in the foster care system, when they're placed into a residential facility, they may be unable to fully express themselves. To be sure, there are many traumatic experiences that youth in the foster care system might experience while being placed in foster care. They might be placed in foster care because a prolonged separation from family members. Perhaps a family member died. Maybe there have been various forms of abuse that this teen experienced. To be sure, over 5 million youth and children in our nation, in the United States, experience domestic abuse in their home every single year. They may have witnessed abuse to others. Perhaps the teenager was abandoned and he is now homeless. Maybe there were drugs or alcohol in the family that he came from before being placed in the facility. Maybe he was neglected or abandoned. Again, maybe his parents have been incarcerated. Well, for whatever it might be, 
whatever the reason he has in place in this residential facility, they're sure to be some sort of disruptions in his life. And these are placement disruptions. The teenagers that you are working with, they may experience emotional, social, or psychological effects, or they may experience a combination of two or all three of these. To be sure, every time a teen is removed from one place to the next, from one home to the next, from one environment to the next, it's known as multiple disruptions. And his mental health will be threatened each time he is removed from one place and placed into yet another facility, another home, another environment. And of course, as a teen goes from one facility to the next, from one home to the next, he's often going to go from one school to the next as well, and his academic performance will suffer. Indeed, youth in foster care, their academic performances are lower than your traditional student. Youth in foster care are at least on average 18 months behind academically. They will struggle with reading and math skills. And 55% of youth who age out or transition out of the foster care system will drop out of school. And then, of course, there is separation anxiety. The more that teen is moved from one place to the next, from one home to the next, from one school to the next, well, the more his anxiety will increase. For you see, separation from family, separation from friends, separation from those he, he knows, separation from those he's formed positive relationships with, separation from those he's learned to trust. When he's separated from those people, it creates anxiety in his life. Being placed into a residential facility is a time of great anxiety for youth in the foster care system. And for those youth who undergo multiple displacements, again, moving from one place to the next, those youth who experience it, it makes it difficult for them to form any sort of positive relationship. It, helps them, it, it, it hurts them from, from forming trust and attachment. Indeed, those teens that do go from place to place, they often place a wall of some sort, an emotional wall to separate themselves from the pain, from the anxiety that they experience and they feel throughout much of the day, much of the day. Now there are other trauma and disorders teens might experience when they are removed from a home, removed from their family, and placed into a residential facility. These traumas and disorders include depression, adjustment disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, often known as ADHD, acute stress disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and eating disorder. For much more on these, check out our training webinar here at the Foster Care Institute on trauma and youth in foster care. Now let's look at a definition of what self-esteem is. And this one comes to us from the Children's Society UK in the United Kingdom. They say this about trauma. Quote, self-esteem is about your self-worth and how you feel about yourself. If you have low self-esteem, it means you are probably low on confidence, more likely to see things in a negative light. If your self-esteem is high, then you're better at self-love and more positive about life in general." End quote. And again, thank you to the Children's Society UK for their definition on self-esteem. But let's look at that, sentence second, that second sentence again. If you have low self-esteem, it means you're probably low on confidence more likely to see things in a negative light. I imagine that many of the youth that you work with today, they are low on confidence and they see things in a negative light. Now, is self-esteem important? 
grow to be sure it is and let's look at why it is important self-esteem can affect all aspects all aspects of a teenager's life and growth going further self-esteem is especially affected by one's self-esteem self-motivation is especially affected by one's self-esteem self-esteem also affects relationships with others including the staff and the other residents of the facility as well as their friends or family members now there are many influencers today on self-esteem some of these influencers include the genetic makeup of the teen his personality his age his health one influencer of self-esteem is his early home environment those formative years which we have discussed here many times in the foster care system. I'm sorry, the foster care system, I apologize. Those formative years are the years between zero to six years of age. Those are the formative years. And that early home environment during that time is a major influencer on self-esteem. If he grew up in an environment that was verbally, physically, sexually abusive, if he experienced neglect, this is a major influence of his self-esteem. Another influencer is sense of love from others. Does he feel that he is loved by others? Many teens in foster do not have this sense of love. A sense of belonging. Does he feel that he belongs with others his age? Does he feel that he belongs in the residential facility? And how he interacts with others is an influencer of self-esteem. Does he have confidence in his own abilities? Abilities at school, abilities at the residential facility, abilities in athletics, abilities in society. And how does he compare himself with others? Others his age, others at school, others older than himself, others in general. How does he compare himself with others? These are influencers of self-esteem so what causes low self-esteem in teens today well we did know that teens in the foster care system have on average lower academic performance this is a cause of low self-esteem in many youth academic performance and lack of support bullying is another cause of low self-esteem in fact we are seeing a rise in bullying today through cyberbullying does he have a disapproving parent or caretaker in his life? Has he been neglected prior to coming to live in a facility? That's a cause of low self-esteem. Social media is a major cause of low self-esteem today. In fact, since the lockdowns of 2020 and 2021, when many youth spent much of their time on social media, we have seen a rise in mental health issues including low self-esteem and a lot of this comes from social media another cause of low self-esteem might be a an experience that was traumatic in his life or the anxiety that he feels so what are the results we've seen the causes of low self-esteem what might be some of those results for that teenager who has low self-esteem what do the results look like well he often has a different difficult time communicating with others communicating with others is only whether it's at the facility the home whether it is at school or in society he may have a difficult time communicating with staff members counselors therapists he might have a difficult time asking for help indeed that is often a large indicator of low self-esteem is one who's having a difficult time asking for help. He might be very sensitive and quite insecure. Maybe he's overly jealous. That is a result of low self-esteem. And another result might be he makes poor relationship choices. Now, I imagine, again, that you find many teens at the residential facility, they make poor relationship choices with others their age or others older. Indeed, others they might meet online who are older than them. This is a result of low self-esteem. They are searching for somebody to care for them 
because they have low self-esteem. They're searching for somebody to show some sign of love, again, result of low self-esteem. So what does low self-esteem look like? What are some of these signs of low self-esteem in youth in the foster care system? Well, to start off with, those teens that have low self-esteem, they often show signs of having difficult times of accepting compliments. Perhaps you compliment on their success in school, their grades or academics. Maybe you're complimenting them on how clean their room remains. Maybe you're complimenting them on helping to make a meal. They have a difficult time accepting your compliments or compliments from anybody. Another sign of low self-esteem is a fear of failure. Teens in crisis often fear they're failing in some aspect. They have a lack of boundaries, whether boundaries with others their age, staff members, room assignments, the personal space themselves. One sign of low self-esteem is a lack of interest in activities. They might speak negatively about themselves, putting themselves down, negative self-talk. They may have a poor outlook on life. Other signs include quitting too easily on tasks, tasks at the residential facility, tasks at school, tasks in athletics, tasks in society. Again, their school performance is often lower than others. They have self-doubt. They doubt that they can achieve anything. They might self-sabotage, self-sabotage relationships, sabotage academics, sabotage athletics, sabotage placements in a facility. Perhaps they've sabotaged previous placements in foster care homes, and as a result, they are now living at the facility. Another sign of low self-esteem in youth crisis is they try to they try much too hard to please others and finally they worry about the choices that they may have made in their life they seem to dwell on past choices in life there are many mental health issues related to self-esteem today these mental health issues related to, self to low self-esteem include anxiety depression eating disorders emotional disorders, internet addiction for those teens who just can't put down the phone, who are on the phone, it seems, all of their spare time. That might be an indication they have mental health issues related to low self-esteem. Other mental health issues related to self low self-esteem include panic disorders, risks and behaviors, and choices that they make social anxiety disorder, substance abuse, and stress. We have a webinar here at the Foster Care Institute on mental health issues for teens, and I encourage you to take time to watch it. So we've looked at some of the causes. We've looked at some of the signs. Now, how do we help that teen who is suffering from low self what can we do today for the youth that you are working with, the youth that you care for, the youth that you're trying to build a healthy relationship with, trust, trying to establish trust, and he has low self-esteem. How do you help him? Well, to begin with, you can show them love. All children, all teenagers, all of us, you, I, everyone, we all need and we all deserve unconditional love. Now, those children and teens who struggle with low self-esteem might not feel loved. They might not feel important. They might not feel valued. We need to remind him every day that he is special, that he is valued, and that he is loved. If you are not reminding that teen with low self-esteem that he's special, that he's valued, that he's loved. If you are not doing this every day, then my question for you is this. Who is? For that teen, 
who is in crisis and is living at this res residential facility, who was letting him know every day how important, how cared for, how loved he is. He needs to hear this every single day from you and from others. So let him know that he is special, that he is important, that he is unique. Listen. The way you speak to the teenager in the home impacts about how he feels about himself. About how he feels about himself. There's an old adage, and you know the adage. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That is a lie. That is a lie. If you were to break your leg, you'd go to the hospital, perhaps an operation, a cast on the leg, and it will heal. Maybe three months, four months, six months. It will heal. But for words, words have strength, words have value, words have weight. Perhaps you were called a name in your childhood, and it still impacts you today. You still feel it today. Words hurt. We can use words to build up people, and we can use words to destroy and tear down people. So it's important, again, the way that you speak to the team impacts about how he feels about himself. So try to refrain from criticizing the team if he comes home and he has a negative school academic report, if his room is yet again messy, if he has been refusing to follow the rules. Try to refrain from criticizing him. Instead, it's okay to voice your concerns in a compassionate, in a patient, in a comforting or loving way. Again, try to refrain from criticizing the teenager. He's probably coming from an environment where he was criticized often. So instead of criticizing him, again, it's okay to voice any concerns you might have in a compassionate tone. Focus on his strengths. Find what his strengths are and focus on those strengths. Whether it is cooking, singing, music, whether it's cleaning, whether it is artistic skills, whether it is with working with animals, whatever his strength might be, celebrate those strengths, encourage those strengths and those skills, and encourage him to use those strengths in the home. Perhaps he does have a skill for cooking. Encourage him to help prepare meals. Maybe he has strengths and skills in music. He's musically artistic. You might encourage him to perform some of his songs or to sing or perform in front of others. Maybe he has great skills or strengths with animals. Well, then ask him to help with feeding the animals at the facility. Whatever his strengths are, focus on those strengths, encourage him to use those strengths, and celebrate those strengths. Again, if you are not doing this, then who is? Something else you can focus on are his feelings. Encourage him to share his feelings and concerns aloud with you. When the teen is ready to talk about his feelings, when he's ready to talk about the concerns he has, when he finally feels he can trust somebody to open up about his feelings, it's critical that you stop what you're doing and you listen. You put down the phone, you put aside the paperwork for later, you turn the laptop off, and you turn towards him, and you engage in listening. Remind him his feelings are important, just as important as anyone else's. Help him to discover why he's feeling this way and help him resolve any issues he might have. We have a webinar here on emphatic listening skills at the Foster Care Institute, and I encourage you to watch that so you can be a better emphatic listener. 
We mentioned earlier here that many teens who have low self-esteem engage in negative talk about themselves. When he is talking negatively about himself, when he's berating himself, when he's insulting himself, quite frankly, you need to step in and instead let him know that this type of talk is unhealthy. This type of talk is unproductive. This type of talk is dangerous. Remind him instead of all those wonderful strengths, all those wonderful skills, those attributes he has and how grateful you are for him. You might say something like, you know what, I don't see that in you. If he's talking negatively about himself, you might say, I don't see that in you. Instead, I see somebody who is incredible, incredible artist who has great skills in music that I don't have. And I'm so grateful for who you are as a person. You know, I think that you are a fantastic individual. You're so bright. You're so smart. I'm so grateful for you. When you work with those animals, they're so happy to see you. You have a natural skill with animals that I might not have, and I'm so grateful for you. That's what he needs to hear. So when he is insulting himself, when he's talking negatively about himself, you go in, you step in, you tell him that this is unhealthy, and you remind him of those great strengths, skills, attributes that he has. For those teens who have low self-esteem, they might be trying to compare themselves to others. You do not compare a teen to another teen. Instead, celebrate each teen's uniqueness, his strengths, his accomplishments. No matter how small those accomplishments might be, you celebrate those accomplishments. Perhaps last week he failed a quiz. This week he passed the quiz. Even though it may be a low 70, he may have passed. You celebrate it. Maybe his, he kept his room clean for two days in a row. You celebrate that. Maybe he went a whole day without using profanity, without cursing at somebody. You celebrate it. Maybe he went the whole day in school without yelling at somebody. You celebrate those accomplishments and you let him know how special and unique he is as a person. For those youth in the foster care system who suffer from low self-esteem, it's important that you do not dwell on his past. Don't dwell on any mistakes he might have made, whether it's mistakes he may have made before coming to the facility, whether it's poor choices he made last week, yesterday, or things he may have said in the past that were harmful. You don't dwell on those. You do not dwell on past poor choices. Instead, you encourage him to learn from those mistakes. Because when you dwell on those past poor choices, it just builds their negative feelings. It builds on their self-doubts. So you don't dwell on them. You instead encourage them to learn from those mistakes, focus on today, the here and the now, and help him plan for an exciting future. Most likely there's been no one to help him plan or look to his future. So talk to him about his future, whether it is college, technical school, military, a career right out of the facility, whatever it might be, help him to plan for, again, an exciting future for him and what that future might look like. As we know, many youth in foster care systems struggle with forming healthy relationships. It is critical every single youth to form a healthy relationship with at least one main caretaker, with at least one main adult figure in his life if he's going to develop socially and emotionally. And that needs to be somebody who cares. Is there a teen in the facility today that needs someone like you to form a healthy relationship with? A positive relationship. So we can learn trust. Whether it's you, whether it's other caregivers, staff, 
foster parents, caseworkers, CASAs, mental health therapists, juvenile judges, church members, teachers. He needs to form a healthy relationship with at least one other adult in his life if he is going to develop better self-esteem, to develop trust, to form healthy relationships with others. Now, we all like to uh, hear words of praise. We all like to hear words of encouragement. For those teens who have low self-esteem, very likely they don't hear words of encouragement often. In fact, they might be coming from an environment before li coming to live with you. They might be living in an environment where all they heard was negative words. They never heard words of encouragement. They need to hear it from you. Your room is so clean. Thank you so much for doing that. You did great on the test. Wow, this meal was fantastic. Thank you so much for helping me to clean up the kitchen after dinner. Whatever it might be, they need to hear something encouraging from you today, tomorrow, and every single day he is around you. Indeed, help him with power of praise. Help him create his own words of praise, his own positive affirmations. It might be something like, I am beautiful, I am loved, I am important, I have an amazing future. Help him develop his own words of praise and his own positive affirmations. For many of us who struggle with mental health issues, writing helps to alleviate some of those challenges. When we put down on paper how we feel, it goes a long ways. Encourage him to write down positive thoughts in a diary or a gratitude journal where she can write down what she's grateful and thankful for every single day. Hobbies and interests can go a long ways in helping those who have low self-esteem motivate him to do something that he enjoys during his free time, whether it is sports, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's cooking, pets, gardening, whatever it might be, something that is not associated with on technology, something that is not associated with phones, something that is not associated with social media, something that is not associated with video games, help him to develop some interests and hobbies that he can do during his free time. Who knows, it might lead to a future career, a career in music, a career in cooking, a career in gardening, a career with caring for others. Along this physical activity goes a long ways in helping those with low self-esteem. Working out is not only good for the body physically, but it also increases energy levels and improves mood. So whether it's playing basketball, going for a walk, riding bikes, hiking, yoga, weights, dance, these are all good ways to help those who suffer from low self-esteem because it, again, it increases energy levels and helps to improve mood. Now, when we help others, we feel better about ourselves. When we focus on others, we're less likely to think poorly of others as well. So find ways that that teenager can help others. Look for ways that he can volunteer. Volunteer at the home. Volunteer at school. Volunteer at church or faith-based organizations. Volunteer organizations, maybe soup kitchens the homeless, Meals on Wheels, whatever it might be, look for ways that he can volunteer to help others. Because again, when we focus on others, we often feel better about ourselves. When we allow you to be creative and show off their unique talents, their skills, their accomplishments, it helps to grow self-esteem. So celebrate their creativity. Celebrate their skills. 
hang up their artwork, encourage them to talk about their creative work, to talk to them about their school assignments or projects, ask them to sing or to dance in front of you, ask them to show you how they interact with animals, how they are feeding the animals and petting the animals. Work alongside them in the garden. Encourage them to play, whatever it might be. Allow them to show their creative side. In addition, one way you can help youth who suffer from low self-esteem is by helping them to set up positive, healthy goals. Positive, healthy goals that are centered around good, healthy diet choices, exercise, etc. Even getting time outside in the sun every day helps to increase serotonin. Serotonin is, quote, the feel-good hormone that helps to boost mood. So again, biking, walking, spending time outside in the garden, playing basketball, throwing a frisbee, playing catch. All of this helps to increase that feel-good hormone, the serotonin, which again helps to boost mood. Get outside and play. Now, having chores, responsibilities, allows a child or a teen to have a sense of accomplishment. It helps them to feel important. It helps them to feel that they have done something successful. It helps to build their confidence. So assign them age-appropriate chores and responsibilities and praise them after they attend to them. This could be helping with meals. This could be cleaning. This could be washing vehicles, whatever it might be. Encourage them after they've done the job. Praise them after they've done the job. Let them know how grateful for you, that you are for what they have done to help around facility. As we mentioned, social media has been a large detriment to today's mental health in ch children and teens. Indeed, many studies indicate that social media usage can increase depression and anxiety. So ensure that their use of social media is done in a healthy fashion. Know what games they're visiting. Know what games they are playing, what they're watching, what they are visiting. Know who their social media contacts are, because some of those contacts could be predatory. Limit their online and phone outage, or I'm sorry, their phone usage every day. For much more on this, read the book, Keeping Foster Children Safe Online, published by Jessica Kingsley Publishing. We've talked about this before here at the Foster Institute. There are many forms of treatment that you can do within the home itself. These include such forms of therapy as play therapy, music therapy, art therapy, animal therapy. Perhaps there might be group therapy or group support sessions a teen can be included in. And if there's any medication involved at any time, of course, you must get permission, not only of the supervisor, but the doctor as well. And you must fully and completely document any time a teen has used any kind of medication. And I stress the word, any kind of medication must be documented. If you're unsure what this looks like, ask your supervisor for more information. For much more on low self-esteem and mental health issues, trauma and anxiety in youth and foster care, visit the Foster Care Institute at drjohndegarmofostercare.com. For more about foster parenting and children and youth in foster care, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you have any questions about this webinar or anything else that I can be of help with, then email me at drjohndegarmo at gmail.com. We have many webinars here at the Foster Care Institute for you as a staff member. And the book, The Foster Care Survival Guide, might be of some insight and help for you as you work with and care for youth in crisis. Indeed, we have many books here at the Foster Care Institute. I'm sure there's one right now that might be a good fit for you. Hey, I want to thank you not only for watching this webinar, but I want to thank you for all that you do to help youth 
crisis. We are facing a pandemic of mental health issues. We are seeing youth with low self-esteem on the increase. These youth need someone like you to tell them how special, how unique, how gifted, how cared for, how valuable, and how loved they are every single day. Your job is a difficult one, I know. But I want to tell you that what you're doing is perhaps one of the most important jobs there is. So thank you for all that you do to help youth in crisis. You are making a difference. You are an inspiration. For the Foster Care Institute, I'm Dr. John DeGarmo.